Welcome back to the program. Uh, with me in the studio are two of my colleagues, Gifty Ando Apia, who is cor our correspondent at the presidency. She's to my far left. There is Malik Abbas Dabu, who is also with our political desk here. We'll discuss this matter over the next few minutes, but I also have to inform you, I have the incoming deputy chief of staff, Johnny Ose, Kofi uh, over the telephone as well. Uh, we're going to go to him briefly. But, but uh, Gifty, I'm going to start with you. You, you work closely at the presidency. What have you heard as being the reason for this kick out? Well, I, I, I don't have any official information as to the reason for this reshuffle or for this change, dramatic changes, I call it, at the, at the presidency. But it's not so surprising because uh, somewhere last week we had we had a snippet of information about some, something like this going to happen. Uh, we're still getting uh, bits of bits and pieces of information, and as and when we have, we will let our viewers know. But it could be that the president feels that the people who he put there could be replaced by people who could do what he wanted better. Mm. It could also be that um, uh, we'll get some more information on that. And, and, and that, that makes me want to go over the telephone. Malik, I'm going to come to you in a bit and ask Johnny. Johnny! Hello, Johnny. Hello. Johnny, you're welcome to the program. But why do you think the president chose you to be deputy chief of staff? Is that why do I? Why do you think the president chose you to be deputy chief of staff? I don't know. <laughs> he did not give any reasons why he appointed me as deputy chief of staff. Mm. But, you but should... I'm sure, you know, he has his own uh, network, of course, you know. And then he decided to uh, to select me to do that work. But you sure and must I think promised, you and should I promise to do my best. Of course, we we can't expect any less from you after all the thing, all the all the things that have happened over the past year. But you sure must yeah. think that uh, that that there could be something special about Johnny Osekofi, and for that reason, for which reason, the president would choose your, him to be your your your. Your voice is a bit weak where I am. I, I think we should fix that problem and then get you back over the telephone. I would, would, would call you again briefly. I have my producers do that. Let me come back to the studio where I have Malik Abbas Dabu, who is with our political desk. Yegipti Andu Apia is our correspondent at the presidency. So Malik, I'm sure you've been looking into this. W what, what have you pieced together? Um, as Gifty was saying, they are, not, they are not willing to tell you exactly what, mm. um, and as you know, the law does not uh, mandate the president to tell us why he makes certain changes. Absolutely. But those of us in the media do know quite well that the chief of staff has been, uh, he's had some difficult moments with some key political figures in the governing National Democratic Congress. And if you followed the recent week's publications by pro-government and pro-NDC tabloids, the campaign has been relentless. They want the, the chief of staff out. Last week there was a, an informal newspaper front page cartoon mm. where the chief of staff was entangled in the fishing net and was being pulled by wild guys dragging him out of the Flagstaff house. That dramatic cartoon tells you how much people in the party wanted him out. Mm. And as you said in your intro, probably the president is a listening one. And he certainly doesn't want to ignore his party people who are calling for changes. And so he's decided to let the man well, go. One would also expect that there would be a certain criteria or there would mm. be a certain um, uh, list of uh, things that you're supposed to do or that your employer expects you to do when he puts you there. Mm -hmm. So he probably ha has also um, measured you know what he expected and what has been delivered to him as a president mm. and and so it could probably maybe he's not just listening to the people who are pushing for the the man to be out but that he's measured what he expected is in terms of uh, reference mm. uh, to to the chief of staff and realized that well maybe like i said someone else could do the job better if, if you tie that in with um the president own comments regarding finance minister said but you're absolutely About right people wanting yes to the president him himself has had occasion exactly. to tell people publicly that people want the finance minister out but he's but still he, there he's, mm. he's convinced exactly. about the, the the work the man is doing and so he's keeping him there so yeah. you're right you're right sure. about that it could be the case that he's marked the man's performances given whatever targets he would have set for him mm -hmm. and he has come to the conclusion that he, he needs somebody to do 
a more targeted job than mm. this man so, may so, have so, done. So speaking of assessing people, I would want us to take a look at the man Prosper Bunny, Prosper Douglas Bunny. But we'll do that in a bit. Johnny Osekofi is back over the telephone. Johnny, so I was saying that uh, for you, I mean, as a person, you'd probably have in your mind uh, something you thought that made you... Uh, the choice, the ultimate choice to be deputy chief of staff. The, the, for which reason the president would, would choose you to fill that position. What do you think that was? As, as I said before, I, I have no clue. The only thing I can say for myself is that uh, I try to do a job as best as I can when I'm, I'm given that task. That is what I can say. But what do you think you... That, I don't think that mm. I am any special person apart from the uh, of my uh, colleagues. Very well. Now, now, Johnny, what, what are you bringing aboard that ship of chief of staff? Well, for me, uh, I work under the, uh, the chief of staff. I'm a deputy chief of staff. So I guess that I'll be working under the instructions of my boss. So uh, he will set the tone, and uh, I will I, I will go along with him. But my little experience, uh, and I say little, uh, as a deputy minister, you know, it is uh, it me that uh, him was very necessary at all levels. So I am sure that. Uh, the work as uh, officer. So, so Johnny, jo jo Johnny, yes. I, I don't get you. You're coming in to take orders from the chief of staff, that's it? It's not orders. If you're a deputy, you are not on your own. Mm. You have a boss. So you don't take all, uh, you don't sort of uh, go your it, own you, you must have plans of your own, mind of your own. You might want to contribute to the well-being of the presidency. It, it's not just about the incoming chief of staff, Julius Debra. Th there must be a reason the president chose you to support him. And, and, and for the fact that Johnny Osekofi hasn't been known in the political landscape uh, as well as, as you, you think the chief of staff should, the deputy chief of staff should be, you might want to share with us the kind of person Johnny Osekofi is. I cannot talk about myself at this time. I think I will leave it uh, for you in future, you know, to judge my performance. But all that I can say is that I have been a, a teacher, and I always say a teacher, I've been a lecturer in the University of Science and Technology. I've also lectured in the second cycle of teaching for many years. I've been a teacher. I've always encouraged my students, you know, to try and be a person and tell whatever they are doing. I've always asked people to themselves, you know, especially uh, uh, those who come from so-called core, you know, background. I've always been involved in disability. I've uh, been a promoter of uh, using uh, local building materials like bamboo for construction and so on and so forth. Now, if some of these things are any more bad, then these are things that I would suggest at uh, meetings and so on that uh, we talk about. I have been a youth uh, activist, not activist in the sense of, you know, youth demonstration, but working towards uh, uh, youth employment for many years. Mm. I, I have actively done these through some NGO that uh, I have. So uh, this is it. Yeah. So I have, I have quite a number of interests you know, Very well. no, jo Johnny. all these things, all these things are part of the work that we are doing. Oh. But I cannot say anything. Uh, the chief of staff, I understand, is, is, is not around. When he comes, he leaves. He will set the agenda. We will put everything in it, package it, and see how the, you know, we move. But mm. we know we will stop. And, and, and I'm going to say again that... For many people, Johnny Osekofi is, is barely known. Uh, you jump from being Deputy Minister of Works and Housing to being deputy, deputy Chief of Staff. Now, that's humongous. How confident are you about this position? <laughs> Ask my students from the uh, University of Science and Technology. 
you ask them, I'm not a timid person. We will work together. I can assure you. You think, you think it's too high a jump? No jump is too high for anybody if you set your mind on to me. Mm, I see. What I want you to do, so we wrap up on this conversation, is okay. to assess the position you're about filling. To assess? Mm. What would be your assessment of the position you're about filling now? Uh, I, 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 I'm not sure I understand the angle we are coming from about that. You, you've been given a position to fill as yes. Deputy Chief of Staff. You, 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 you will definitely want to know the challenges of this position. You'd want to know the merits of this position. In knowing that, what has been your assessment of the position? What sort of problem you, do you think you're filling in to, to deal with? Yeah, the, 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 well, I wouldn't call it a problem. Mm. Every job might be its own uh, uh, talent. I know I will have to work long hours. But that is what I'm also used to as a lecturer in the best. Uh, I know there are a lot of ideas that are coming, problems that are coming. Mm. I'm to put it on the table and packing them as best as we can. Johnny, let me, let me put it this way, Johnny. Hello, Johnny. Yes. Over the past year, the chief yeah. of staff position has come under the radar. People have complained about how the presidency was being run. You going in, you would have that, ta that task together with the chief of staff, together with your boss, to deal with. So what I'm asking is, what would be your assessment of the kind of challenge you're going to fail? I, I don't want to make an assessment of what you would call the past. I don't want to make that. It may have been people's uh, uh, impression of the subject that there was a problem and so forth. Very well. Johnny I have not I have not done that. I don't I haven't uh, uh, studied that, whatever. Mm. We go for meetings, we get away and so forth. Very well. Sometimes the assessment people feel may be very subjective. So as far as I'm concerned, there is a job to be done. Very we well. Do and we wish you all. Thank you very much, Johnny. Johnny Osei Kofi is incoming def Deputy Chief of Staff. Still in the studio here with me, uh, uh, correspondent at the Presidency, Gifty and Apia, and join News as political desk, Malik Abbas Dabu. Malik, you agree with him? That there were just opinions about the challenges at the Presidency, which all fall on the lap of the uh, Chief of Staff. Uh, I don't know whether they were opinions or they were real. I would say they were real mm. because um, in politics, usually you have you cannot dismiss rumors. And as Gifty operated from there, I think she would be in the best position to tell us some of the things that she can't give us details mm. because, of course, some of those things do not um, <laughs> are not for public consumption. But I'm sure she would tell you that you will see palpable um, disagreements even though you, you will not be permitted to go out and publicly state them. Let's see how we can, we can look at the position closely. What were some of the challenges at the presidency that the chief of staff had to deal with while in office? Let me just talk about what everybody uh, is aware of. Mm. Uh, let's talk about um, someone like uh, a senior person in the NDC party like Alban Bagbin. Um, coming out to complain about not having access to the presidency, for instance, and let's limit it to that. So I mean, that, that is a scenario. That is a perfect scenario that could give you an indication as to what is happening. I mean, you might want to read your own meanings into all of these, but it gives you an indication that there is something that is preventing some people from doing something, and some people who feel that they have the right to do something are not being allowed to do it. Mm. And so it could be could as well be one of the challenges that, that uh, the presidency, the entire presidency have to deal with. And Alban will say a lot of things like, if so and so people are the people who are managing the presidency, then they feel that the president, the president is naked and, you know, all mm -hmm. kinds of comments. Uh, that the, the, there were so, some also who thought that uh, Prosper Bunny yielded too much power while uh, he was chief of staff. W w you worked closely with him. What he sort of a yielded person? too much power. Too much power. We had him give instruction the here and there and all that. What sort of a person was he working working at the president? Well, what I can say about uh, um, the chief of the former chief of staff is that when I when he came into office, I tried to you know get closer to him, but I think he's a very discreet person. He, he, he barely speaks. He would see you and pass by quietly. Um, his 
for me, my assessment would be that he's the difficult to approach type of person. Mm. And that is what, how he came out to me. I think also that he is, uh, um, let me just leave it there, but he, he's difficult to approach. But he's Malik. difficult to approach. And these are, these are some of the things that, you know, people, people want to be able to approach leadership. Okay, so when you are put in a certain position, people want to be able to come to you openly. One other person that we didn't see much of is the Deputy Chief of Staff, uh, Valerie Sawyer. Mm. We didn't see as a correspondent uh, for other, other presidency. She's not someone that I saw much. So I do not know how their working relationship was between them but of course we don't get close to the, to the mm. chief of staff that much once in a while you see him and I think at the latter day during his latter days he started getting a bit putting himself more in the media mm. I cannot explain why he did that but at some point you will see that uh, he would speak to but he was someone who mm. hardly speaks I mean he hardly spoke even when you try to interview him he wouldn't but, but, speak but right? Malik you, you have been gathering information on this how were the tabloids assessing him while he was chief of staff well, <coughs> some of them were of the opinion that he had become too powerful. Mm. Uh, there was there was a front page commentary that was asking the question: Has the chief of staff become more powerful than the president? And there were other stories that said that the NDC, as a, a governing party, was considering um, stepping away from the president as far as he kept, as long as he kept um, Prosper uh, Bani as as his chief of staff. And you have to look at his issue. In accordance with a range of things, you know that there were other people who left before him. Ben Duce Malo, mm. he was there. He left before Prosper Bani. In fact, mm. we did the story two weeks ago that said that the three of them were going we're to lead the presidency. Ben Duce Malo, uh, Dr. Mm. Ramona Tuguba, secretary to the president at the time, and then um, the chief, of, the chief staff. of staff. It was curious that when we did the story, less than 12 hours after that story, uh, a press release came from the presidency. Mm. The press release was quoting the chief of staff. The press release said a statement signed by the chief of staff had confirmed the exit of Dr. Tukuba and Ben Chemalo. And that was curious for me as a journalist because if the chief of staff is still at post and he's working, why would the chief of staff issue a statement which ought to be signed and sent to the media houses? That statement is kept somewhere and a press release is carved out of that statement and sent to press houses. But do you realize that the same thing happened with the, with the recent uh, release? Exactly. Absolutely. So it's probably something that we might want to look into. Who is uh, putting together all these press releases? It's, it's, mm -hmm. Because we need, usually you want to see a, a, a release that is signed or a statement that is signed and then we as journalists will write our information so you can vouch for it, story. you mm -hmm. can authenticate it. But the curious thing was that that statement came and confirmed the two exits. Didn't say anything about no, the chief of staff. staff. It only quoted him, mm -hmm. but promised that more were to follow. And now we know the story. But, more but are following. What exactly is the issue? Is it an issue of the president listening to his party, listening to the tabloids? listening to the Ghanaian people yeah, yeah, it was I think that we should the power struggle at the presidency kicks these people you out. see like like um Osakofi was uh, Johnny uh, was saying that I think we should be mindful of people who have their own agenda who are using these tabloids to push that agenda okay and not make it look necessarily look like it is reflecting of the situation on the ground per se about talking about the chief of staff I mean I think that the chief of staff has power Mm -hmm. uh, so the question about whether the chief of, of staff has too much power that the presidency for me doesn't come in. He has power. That, that he is chief of staff. So he has power. As to how he uses the power, is he abusing the power? That, is, that should be the question. Because I see that people are hiding behind all of these things and, you know, putting things across the tabloids to push a certain agenda. So we sh that's also one thing that we should be mindful of when we are mm. probably assessing what, what the chief Malik, of staff is doing. Yeah, and I think that another an angle we should look at is, if you look at the chief of staff, I don't know about you, for me, I've been in journalism for quite a while now. I never heard about the chief of staff until he was appointed. Mm. Ramona Tuguba, I know Ramona Tuguba. I never knew that Ramona Tuguba had any links to the governing NDC, NDC. until he was appointed. Ben Duchemalo, we never knew about him and NDC before he was appointed. And you know that there are various other people who were appointed. Uh, Aung San Suu the president's mm -hmm. um, first yes. four. The first four the president appointed were Ramona Tuguba, Prosper Bani, um, Aung San Suu as secretary to then Sule Garba. All of these people were not known NDC people. Mm. 
and you know that as uh, Gifty said, there were complaints about people who thought that they had done all the dirty work and the president came mm -hmm. into power, he decided to go bring other people yeah. who didn't do much work and yet those were the people he appointed. You would also know that some independent people praised the president for those appointments mm -hmm. because yeah. as far as they were concerned, the president was placing emphasis on competence rather than political yeah. convenience. Yeah. The question I'm asking is, has that, did the president gamble? Mm. And did it pay? Did it pay? Or he lost his gumbo? It, oh. Is it the case that um, those people have failed him? Or is it that the kitchen is simply too hot and they are finding their way out of government? I guess we, we may never know. We, we may never know. Like, but, 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 but Johnny Osaikofi, for instance, had some kind of party affiliation, though not, not strong. Mm. And if you look at the terrain of people who do not have party affiliations, who have come into government, you realize that, uh, I, I don't know, majority of them are out now. Perhaps the president decided to... Well, majority of them are out now. Mm. So it's for us to... Going for because Pospa Bani is a friend to the... Has been a friend to the president. I mean, for very, they go way back. Mm. And he came on board. He was not a known face as well. So like Malik is saying, is it that the kitchen is too hot? So for all of these not known faces who come... The, it, for, the, the, I, guess, like I, guess, we, I guess we need to go into that and find uh, a response to it. I, and, as the day goes, we, as goes <laughs> by, we should what, what, she about, sure what, what she said about our sake of ties in with what the questions I was raising mm. about these independents and whether they are failing. If Osei Kofi is an, a known NDC person, Julius Debra was also an is. Eastern is Regional it, mm. Minister. He has is been known. Eastern Regional Chairman is of the known. party, and he's a known is NDC known. person. Osei Kofi is a known NDC person. But Osei Kofi is not so much of a known NDC person, but he has but he, a he bit does of, have a affiliation exactly. with the party. I, I'm, exactly. I'm, I'm, but I'm if Prosper informed. Bani is the friend, was the friend to the president, then he is not a known face, but of course he has some kind of it's ties. It's, it's only so logical. We see similarities, exactly. <laughs> so we see similarities, except that in the first, in the previous. Uh, a regime. You have the chief of staff who is not known, but of course affiliated. Valerie Sawyer is the daughter of uh, an I'm NDC. Uh, ex mm. ex ex exactly. So he, she is like a known NDC person. So mm. you look back, look back at the situation we're having right now. Osei Kofi is could replace. So, so, so then again, it's difficult to tell if really the president. We will have to in see terms of that position. This is a very important time because we are in 2015, mm. and next year we're having an election. Mm -hmm. So I think that this we uh, the reason that we're not getting, we could also be looking at the election, the com upcoming election. It, it sounds almost impossible. To, it is a complicated to twist. A government job to people who are not affiliated with any party at all. It sounds almost in, so, impossible. So I've come to learn. Yes. Yeah, so we look forward to But But let's look at the man Julius Debra and the shoes he's about to fill. So. I'll, I'll start off with you again. What do you think? Um, I don't know him so much, but I think that I, I think he's a fine gentleman. And Malik will say that he has what's the word again? <laughs> His rise has been meteoric. Meteoric. <laughs> yeah. Yes, you know he was. He was. Uh, I saw the first time I saw him as he was Greater Accra Regional Minister. Oh, okay. uh, Eastern, Eastern region. Eastern region. Eastern no, region. before he went to the Eastern region, I think he was. There was something because then I came to. I think oh, it was when the president tougher. decided yes. that and you, it was you didn't quick. necessarily need to a, have come from you. Exactly, region. and it was a very quick. Mm. There was a very quick change. I think that he's a, uh, he's known right now for more of the sanitation day, the national sanitation day that he was instrumental in. I wonder in what will happen to them. that. <laughs> oh, but that, that that has been the directive. It's been a president. There's been a presidential directive on that, so it is there to stay. And he's also instrumental in getting the vice president to go out on the streets during the cholera, our uh, cholera days to uh, uh, fix the sanitation problem that we have. I think they probably have seen some kind of competence in him with mm. the positions that he's occupied so far. Mm. And of course, this is a, this is a huge jump, if you ask me. And I agree with Malik from from uh, uh, minister, regional minister to uh, minister of local government, and then uh, at least the he's, he's gone through the mail. Unlike yeah. his deputy, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and I'm wondering how he's going to assess himself because there was a program that that started earlier where the chief of staff or where the presidency was supposed to be assessing ministers mm. or based on what they have done, and we never heard anything about that. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at how he's going to carry on with this kind of assessment and mm. how is he going to assess himself as local government. <laughs> yeah. well, like, how is he going to assess himself word. and the other people who will be his peers? I mean, as Gifty said, I, I, I think. Um, Especially when, when he became local government minister, I think he, he proved um, 
to have some of these national capabilities. If you look at what he did with the sanitation, touring, um, just regions and meeting with traditional leaders, getting Asante yeah. Hene or Chehene, um, all involved uh, in the sanitation. You know, all of these people involved in the sanitation. Uh, he got the vice president opinion leaders, imam yeah. chiefs, all of them to go onto the streets to mm. clean and he pushed that agenda and pushed it forcefully. Uh, you would say that he's demonstrated some abilities to mobilize and organize people. It remains to be seen how mm -hmm. those skills would help yeah. in, in, in uh, calming position. the waters at the presidency. Yes. Mm, yes. Um, that remains to be seen. Yes, I think that he also we'll, has we'll, a good we'll look uh, forward to the we'll, we'll, relations. We'll, we'll so cross we'll our see. fingers on that one. Thank you very much, guys. <laughs> Gifti Andapia is a correspondent at the presidency. Malik Abbas Dabu is with our political desk here at Joy News. When I come back, we'll go to the Confanotri Teaching Hospital, where the hospital has been pushed to look to the open market for uh, to refill its oxygen plants. Don't go away. <laughs>